It is extremely frustrating when your camera stops recording at 30 minutes or maybe even sooner and you didn't realize it until you go to turn it off and find out it already turned off. So I'm gonna show you six cameras for under $1,000 with no recording limits. And to all you Canon lovers, I'm sorry, but Canon keeps plaguing their cameras with all the recording limits like the four gigabyte limit on entry level cameras that stops between 10 and 12 minutes or the normal 30 minute limit on all of their cameras pretty much unless you go to their cinema line. So no Canon cameras in this lineup, but we're gonna look at four Sony cameras and then move on to another brand, Panasonic, for a couple cameras there and talk about which one will probably be the best for you. And I'm gonna have links to all the cameras I talk about today in the description, so if you do end up buying through one of those links, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but helps out the channel a lot. So first up, we have the Sony ZV-1. And I must say, I was quite impressed with this camera when I rented it last year. I was testing it out to figure out which camera I'd suggest for beginner filmmakers for this year, because this thing packs tons of video features. I really don't normally like fixed lens cameras, but the lens on this is equivalent to 24 to 70, which is what I typically use on my camera anyway. So it has a good focal length range. And also it has all the video features like picture profiles and stuff like that that a lot of the older like a6100 cameras don't even have so this thing there's no recording limit however i do have to let you know that this thing will overheat once you start getting close to 30 minutes anyway so it kind of defeats the purpose but there are a few of these cameras that do overheat and i'm going to go over some techniques to get around that later on in the video so make sure you stay tuned for that but this is pretty good overall little camera 750 dollars and next up we have the sony zv e10 this one is 800 dollars and this is also the camera I suggested for beginner filmmakers. And this one, same as the last one, it will start to overheat once you're getting around that 30 to 40 minute mark. Same as the ZV-1, lots of great video features, no recording limits if you get around the overheating issues. But in general for filmmaking, that's not a big deal because you're recording like four to five minute clips at a time at the most for scenes that you're planning out for stuff. But we're looking at stuff for longer form like podcast, maybe a wedding ceremony, lots of applications. So let's move on to the next one. We have the Sony A6100. This is for $850. And I'm doing these with the kit lenses that come with it because obviously you gotta get some kind of lens with it and this still keeps it under $1,000 and the lens is good enough for something like a podcast. And this is an older camera so it does have fewer features than the ZV E10, but it is the camera I suggested for two years up till this year for beginner filmmakers. Has a lot of great options, no video recording limits. It will overheat once you get higher up in that recording range, over 30 minutes on this one. It is a bigger camera so it's longer before it overheats, but it will last you a whole lot longer than the first two cameras. And then we have the A64, 400 with the kit lens for $998. See, I kept it below a thousand, but same as this is pretty much the same body as the A6100, but more video features packed into it. So really, if you're looking to just long form record, you don't care so much about having some extra video features that are making things look more cinematic if you're doing that type of video work, then the A6100 is plenty for that. But this same performance as the A6100, it'll last you a pretty long time before it starts overheating. But as far as overheating goes for all these four cameras, because I love Sony, but these cameras are tiny, so they overheat quicker. So before we move on to the Panasonic cameras that don't overheat, the things you can do to help out with this is, for one, you know, the body gets hot and you want the heat to dissipate. So like with the A6400 and A6100, flip either the screen up or pull it out from the body because it's on a little hinge type system. So you can pull it out and that lets some of the heat dissipate and both the ZV E10 and ZV1 have a flip out screen so you can just flip that out all the way whether you're recording yourself or you're recording someone else just have the screen pulled out and that helps dissipate a lot of the heat and secondly you want to use an external power source if you're going to do some kind of long recording like a podcast for example you can get a dummy battery which is essentially a battery with a cord connected to it that you can plug up to the wall or some other power source and what this does is essentially the camera gets hot when it's recording for a long time and then the battery as it drains it's getting warm too and the camera being hot doesn't help with that process but when you're using a dummy battery it's not draining at all because it's being being powered from an external source so it'll stay cool longer and help out with that and I'll have dummy batteries linked in the description for all these different cameras as well so you can get one of those along with your camera because essentially you're gonna need one regardless not just to keep it from overheating but also your battery is gonna drain 
in an hour or so when you're recording. So if you're doing some kind of long podcast, you're going to want it to keep going. And the last thing you can do with all these cameras is shoot in a lower resolution. Yes, you have the 4K option, but if you're recording a podcast, do you really need it to be at 4K? Someone's probably just going to be sitting there listening to it most of the time. I usually listen to other people's podcasts, even if it's on YouTube, while I'm working out. So I'm not even looking at them the whole time. So really, Full HD is plenty for that type of thing. Lower bit rate, so it's not going to take as much power to process that video information. It'll be a lot longer before the cameras overheat. So you could record in Full HD instead of 4K. 4K, pull the screen out and use a dummy battery and that'll help. And in these Sony cameras, there's a temperature setting that you can set up that allows the camera to get hotter before it turns off. You don't really want to rely on that all the time because essentially it's keeping the camera's internal parts from breaking. And if you're, it's constantly overheating to that point, then eventually something's probably going to break and that's not good. But I usually leave that on for mine because every so often I might have it running for a long time. And so it's good to have that. But if you know you're going to constantly be doing really long recordings, I wouldn't necessarily plan on that as a go-to for keeping your recording lasting longer. So let's move on to our next two cameras that don't have the overheating issues. We have the Panasonic Lumix DMC FZ 2500. Now, I don't know how they come up with some of these names, but there it is. This camera is also fixed lens. It's $900, but it has an extremely large focal length range. You see the equivalent is 24 to 480 millimeters. Now, obviously you're not gonna need something like that if you're doing a podcast, you don't need 480 millimeter reach on your camera, but it's available for you. The downside of this camera though, is that there's no microphone input. Now, once again, we're talking about podcasts a lot. So if you're doing that, ideally you'll have mics on the people or mics on the table. So you'll have better audio because if you've got a camera with a wide angle filming multiple people talking, it's really not ideal to use the camera audio. You want to have mics closer and then you sync all that stuff in post. So not a huge deal for that type of stuff. But if you're wanting to use it for an all around camera where you're putting a mic on it and filming other stuff, probably not ideal. I would rather go with the Panasonic GH4 and this, has been a great camera for a long time. It's a micro four third sensor. This is $700 for just the camera. It doesn't come with a kit lens, at least on B&H, but there are tons of great micro four thirds lenses you can get for this great picture quality, all that type of stuff. Now, technically this camera only records for 220 minutes and it will turn off. But I mean, that's almost four hours, not even Joe Rogan's podcast are that long. So if you're doing something that long, just set a three hour and 40 minute timer and know that you need to go restart the recording. But this is probably the camera I would suggest overall, if you're looking to get something for long form recording podcast, you want a backup camera maybe for a wedding. Granted, if it's a different brand from something you're using, that'll make color grading more difficult, but it's good to know that the thing can record for a long time, will not overheat. Once again, I'd use a dummy battery, pull the screen out from it just to let any heat dissipate from the camera so you don't run into that, especially if it's a hotter environment that you're recording in. But the Panasonic GH4 has long been known to be a great camera and this will definitely do what you need. But those are six cameras that are under $1,000 that have no video recording limits aside from some overheating that happens on the Sony ones that we mentioned that there are some workarounds for. But let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about these cameras. I'll try to answer anything I can and help you out there. Camera Motion Community Facebook group, you can join all kinds of filmmaking questions there. I've got hundreds of people there. If I can't answer your question, chances are someone else can. And hit the like button if this video was helpful. Subscribe if you're new and I will see you in the next one.